Um, okay, let's get started. So, um, before we get into the topic, I just want to um, tell a few things. So, last uh, word I got from Purnima. Purnima, um, she's, a do she's a doctor too. She works here her, uh, in South Carolina. I heard that there are like 80% of the hospitals are full in South Carolina. That's not a good news, but uh, at the same point, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but uh, that's the fact. So I think we got to keep that in mind and uh, in increase the awareness. And then uh, uh, it tells the importance of being safe and healthy. Um, our goal should be to transform ourselves and be prepared for the worst. Uh, but if you're wondering how this session is related to the current situation, I can, I can help how to correlate that. <laughs> so they, daily, like, I mean, like, um, every day when, uh, when I, when the regular business day goes, right? Like I used to go to work and then like in the morning, Google will tell me like, Hey, time to time to go to work. Um, and then when it's time to come back home, it says, hey, you need to get started. You need to go home. So it was all organized and like uh, um, technology used to help a lot, right? So, but right now it's, it's doing the same way. It's helping us, but, um, uh, but like those devices, they're quiet now because they are confused as much as we are. Like they don't know when you start. You don't know when you do your thing. So it's a little disorganized. And then we try to arbitrarily pick up things and then do like, apart from our regular busy schedule that we do at work. Um, so I think when the, when everything is like this, it's, it gets really difficult. And then we try to do different things and uh, we take up a lot of uh, different activities and tasks because we, we think there is a lot of time, but in fact, there is not, as much time as we had before. So when we are doing a lot of these things, we, like I said, we get little disorganized and we try to, um, we try to accomplish a lot. And especially I'm talking the accomplishment is like uh, when we are trying to venture into different projects and then like, uh, um, especially outdoor or indoor, like uh, um, we get uh, physically, it becomes strenuous. And it's, um, it is always a good idea to understand how our physical anatomy is. And uh, we need to listen to the people who can better <laughs> help us understand. Because we, do, we are doing things and then we don't know what the repercussions of them would be. Uh, um, and uh, we need to plan to work with our body in a way that it would not get impacted in the long run. Right? So, and today we have like um, um, Dr. Pranita Reddy and uh, she's a physiatrist. First, I didn't know like what a physiatrist is, to be honest. I didn't, I, I wasn't sure like what a physiatrist is. I was, I looked up and then the, I looked at the definition of it and then I was trying to understand like, okay, well, well, what is this physiatrist? For me, it felt like it is like, um, they are like, they have an overarching uh, uh, understanding of the whole anatomy and a uh, lot of details. I felt that it was like, it was like a wonderful field to be in. Like you're not focused on one thing. You need to have a better understanding of everything and uh, try to treat the patients accordingly. And, um, and they are like physiatrists lead the physical therapist, occupational therapist, and then they're the physical extenders to the optimized patient care. So basically like they are working with other doctors, trying to understand and trying to help the, um, help the people, right? So Dr. Pranita Reddy has um, received her uh, medical degree from Gulbarga, Karnataka, and she completed her internship at Gandhi Hospital. Sanvir Hospital and JS Hospital in India. And she did her residency at Frankfurt Hospital in Philadelphia. She um, completed her uh, medicine, physical and rehabilitation at uh, UPMC in Pittsburgh. And she was also a chief resident and did a fellowship in pain management at uh, West Penn Hospital in Pittsburgh. And she has been practicing um, about um, the, for about 12 years in this field of uh, inter- Conventional spine medicine, 
and she is uh, currently working at Prisma Health um, USC Orthopedics. She is, of course, uh, board certified, and uh, her specialties include uh, uh, lower back pain, neck pain, and there are a lot of other things. I'll, I'll let her speak to that. <laughs> I don't want to uh, say anything wrong there. And uh, uh, she is also like uh, the sh most of us know her through the Bhajan Group, like. Um, um, I personally know her only through the Bhajan group. I, uh, so that, that was good uh, thing that like uh, we get to know and then, uh, and then uh, hang on, I'm trying to, to do two, two things here. The people are coming, joining, so I'm trying to make sure I admit them. Uh, and Srinivas Radhikara is here now. And um, uh, with that, I, uh, I want uh, Pranita Redigar to talk a little bit, tell what we need to do, what we need to be careful. There were some questions like uh, standard questions or the questions I thought would might, would might be interested to everybody. I put them in the blog and then she will uh, probably address those. And then uh, um, after that, we will uh, have any question answers and then like we'll, we'll have just regular discussion and then get some insight uh, as to what and how we need to uh, uh, treat ourselves and uh, uh, make sure we don't hurt ourselves. Um, with that, I'll give to Pranita Reddy and uh, we'll start the session. Thank you, Venugaru. Um, so, um, are you going to share the slides now or you want me to just... Um... Whenever we miss them, okay. Okay. Do you want to start yeah. talk a little bit and then uh, we can do the yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Also, uh, I'm glad everybody knows me through Sai, ba Sai Baba Bhajan rather than as a physician because I don't want to see you all as patients. <laughs> so, definitely, uh, the field that I am in, uh, physiatry or physical medicine and rehabilitation is what I did as a residency, which is like you mentioned, it is like treating the person as a whole rather than just one particular um, uh, area of uh, the body. Also, it's more physical medicine, more like uh, musculoskeletal medicine. But then what took interest in the fellowship was interventional spine, where it's more uh, patients with lower back pain, neck pain. So I thought, um, you know, is there anything that we can get the patients back to their function, their normal life? So then I did the fellowship in that, where it's all more like injections. Of course, treating still uh, as physical medicine, rehabilitation, physician, um, as a whole person. But basically, I still specialize just most, mostly in the interventions at this time. Um, so what I thought would be interesting to talk is just basic um, lower back pain, neck pain that most everyone may would have had in some part of their life, which is just could be just a little spasm or a little sprain strain kind of thing, maybe not very big. So which is also 80% common complaint is lower back pain. So I thought I'll just touch base in what are the things to look for, what are the causes, how we can prevent, what's the best techniques of doing things, uh, posture and things like that. So, and then based on that, obviously, if there is more questions, we can do more discussion than me talking, yeah. So um, we'll start with the slides. Yeah. You guys can see the screen. Thank you, Andy. I can, I am able to see, I'm sure most. Is it, is it too big? Uh, yeah, you can make it smaller if you want. That should be fine, uh, I think. Every can, everybody can able to see it. Yeah. Venu, the way you had it initially was good, Venu. This is yeah, initially was, first thing was good because then it, the whole screen is going away otherwise. Yeah, actually. Is that good? Uh, this yeah. is good. Yeah, yeah, this is good. 
So when we talk about pain, there is um, several times questions as to uh, what is pain, whether, you know, is it this pain that I need to see a physician right now or should I wait? So we describe the pain as acute and chronic pain. Acute pain is something that lasts for less than three months. It could be just for a day to uh, up to three months. Chronic pain is when the pain does not go away and it just stays with you for more than three months. That, that's what we said. If I have to choose the next one, that's, thank you, thank you. So causes, very common causes, we overuse ourselves, our back or neck, or because we are constantly moving, using the back, using the neck, using our arms and um, constantly moving. So overuse, strenuous activity, and most importantly, improper use. We are not using it properly will cause all the problems. Muscle strain, sprain, muscle spasms, these are the most common thing. Uh, some people, some uh, may have joint problems, arthritis, which runs in families. It's something we can't avoid. It may come uh, with age and with family uh, genetics. Um, pain can be also with herniated discs, pinch nerves, which commonly we talk as sciatica. And most uh, other causes which are not very common could be a tumor, could be infection, osteoporosis in older uh, and compression fractures. There can also be congenital abnormalities of your bones and vertebral bodies. That could be the common causes. Um, symptoms, when, when we're looking for symptoms with neck, you may have neck pain, pain running down the arm associated with numbness, tingling. Some may have headaches with the neck pain, shoulder pain, and uh, the pain could be dull or sharp or shooting kind of pain. Same thing with lower back, you may have lower back pain alone or it may run into your legs associated with numbness, tingling. Um, and then the pain with prolonged standing, prolonged sitting and sometimes weakness in your legs. These are typical symptoms with neck or back. So I have a question. So like, uh, sure. I, mean, I mean like uh, these pains, like I mean like do we have a way to identify whether it's, is it serious or like when, we should be worried yeah. about like yeah i have i have a slide at the end when we should be worried and then um seek a physician uh immediately or probably could wait it out okay um so the most common diagnosis that we do other than you know uh, when you see a physician is physical exam x-rays and mri that will give us more details about what the cause of the pain is and Common treatments, when, when say you have a muscle spasm or um, uh, just a strain or sprain, sometimes just resting it. Uh, rest is something you don't want to do for a long time because again, the body will start getting stiff. So once you think you can move around um, after the pain eases up a little by taking either Tylenol, Ibuprofen or Advil or leaf over the counter. All, always you want to use cold pack for eight hours when you immediately have pain a lot of us go for heat as soon as we have pain but the first 48 hours with acute pain you want to use cold pack and then you can uh, change it to heat um, and like i said you want to move around not completely have bed rest once you feel you're able to move so that you're not causing stiffness uh, massage is another thing that uh, people benefit with, physical therapy, core strengthening exercises, and medications, like I said, Advil leave over the counter, Tylenol, or sometimes muscle relaxants, which are prescribed. Stress is a big thing for pain, so stress management. Of course, nutrition, which um, uh, as Suhasnaka spoke, nutrition is a big part in uh, our well-being. Uh, work ergonomics, which I'll speak about in a little bit. Um, last but not the least is injections and surgery for severe uh, cases. What are the complications that may have once the pain goes to be chronic, which is greater than three months? Obviously with pain, you are uh, depressed. Uh, you're not able to do much activities, so weight gain, uh, loss of productivity. You're not able to function. You're not able to do what you like to do and nerve damage in severe cases. So prevention is the best. Prevention is the best cure, as we all know. 
what do we need to do to avoid all these um, having neck pain, chronic lower back pain uh, practice? Correct lifting techniques, avoid heavy lifting, always ask for help if there is anything heavy. Uh, when you do lift something heavy, bend your legs, not your back. Keep your back straight and then lift it with the body and the legs. Proper use of telephones, computers, and equipment. We a lot of time use our, uh, we bend our head towards the shoulder to hold the phone. You don't want to do that. You want to use hands free set. Um, and maintaining correct posture while sitting, standing, sleeping. Exercising regularly. Uh, back stretching and strengthening exercises. Yoga is very good. Um, 30 minutes of exercise at least five times a week would be uh, ideal. Uh, more than that should be fine too, but ideal is at least 30 minutes of exercise five times a week. Maintaining healthy weight, uh, reducing emotional stress and work stress, stress which causes muscle tension. Uh, make sure to take enough vitamin D. We are all low in vitamin D and low vitamin D and calcium can give muscle uh, pain and fatigue and so that's something uh, it has be become very common that we in the United States have always low vitamin D so that's something taking daily is also recommended. Um, as we are talking about work ergonomics, posture, uh, this is a simple slide which kind of um, talks about everything, head, neck, elbows, chair. I should be at the level uh, top of one third of the screen of your computer. Now that everybody is working from home, most everyone is working from home, work ergonomics, try to get the proper workstation because you're there eight hours, some of them more than that. Um, and if you are typing from a document, you wanna hold the, have a document holder, which is on top next to the computer screen so that you're not um, tilting your head down and up. Um, keyboard and mouse should be in the proper height. Um, take breaks every 30 minutes is a little too much but at least every couple of hours if you can take a break move around stretch yourself move your neck stretch your neck um, which while we are working we are so engrossed in work that we forget to do but that's very important also um, Proper lifting techniques, as I spoke earlier, this is just a picture showing how you want to do it properly. You want to bend at knees, um, keep your back straight all the time, and the heavy object should be close to your body and try to lift it up with your legs and not bend your back. Keep your neck straight and also use proper shoe, uh, uh, footwear. And a little uh, saying, always lift safely. If it's too heavy, always ask for help. You don't want to break your back. This is just a slide. This was a study done uh, many years ago and it has been compared several times to show the disc pressure when we are doing different activities. So disc is, um, again, to just brief out, uh, I always tell patients there are layers of pain in our body. First is the muscle, next one is your bone, and then you have disc and then the nerves. These are all what can give you pain depending on the severity. So when we talk about the disc pressure, when you lay down, which uh, the picture kind of shows the first picture, when you lay down, it, that has least pressure on your um, lower back, but that doesn't mean we are gonna lay down all day. So the other things that would put pressure is when you're um, sitting up straight. Sitting up straight as compared to leaning forward, sitting up straight has lesser disc pressure than leaning forward. As we think leaning forward probably is a better posture, but it's not. Sitting up straight um, to, re uh, to have less disc pressure is always recommended. Same thing with lifting. If you see, it does show that having a straight back has lesser pressure on your disc as compared to bending forward at the back. So that's why you wanna have those proper lifting techniques to avoid long-term uh, disc problems or disc injuries. This is very common again, all of us, including adults and children have tex neck syndrome. Um, this is not, this is going to be a problem going forward, which it is already, but it's going to be even worse because the younger generation growing up will have a lot of issues with your neck and um, uh, texting uh, is the uh, major source of communication these days. And as you see, when you have your neck straight, 
the uh, pressure on your um, uh, cervical spine or the neck and the disc is way less as compared to bending forward as we do. So again, I do recommend um, uh, adults and children to keep their phone up uh, straight if possible and then try to uh, text and read that way. Um, head is a very big heavy um, um, organ in our body so head is what uh, plays a weight on your neck and all kind of neck problems in future. Uh, proper posture as we were uh, talking about ergonomics and then also proper lifting Posture standing, you want to stand with your head up, shoulders straight, chest forward. Um, weight balanced on both feet. And you want to, when you're standing, especially a lot of us while cooking and doing different activities, standing for uh, long periods of time, you want to put one foot up on this stool and change it every five to 15 minutes. If it's not practical, at least every 30 minutes. Um, and sitting with proper back support. You always want to sit with that back support. And if you're sitting for an eight hour workday continuously, you want to do neck rotation, stretching exercises, um, at least in between one to two hours if possible, uh, is recommended. Reaching overhead, you want to use a footstool. Use two hands to lift and get it close to your body while getting it down. Um, driving is another thing. If we are driving for long periods of time, you want to have good back support. If the car seat does not have good back support, you can always use a um, lumbar roll or even, even uh, roll up a little towel and put it in the back. That also gives support to your back. And um, your knees should be at the same level or higher than your hips while um, driving or sitting in the driver's seat. And move the seat closer to the wheel. You don't want to have too much strain on your arms or on your feet. Sleeping also is a, an important thing. Um, you want to have a firm mattress. You don't want to have a mattress that you, sinks you in and a box spring set that does not sag. Um, when standing up from a lying position, you want to roll to one side and drop, drop both your knees towards yourself and then sit up and change the mattress every seven to 10 years if possible. Okay, so COVID-19 and exercise is we are all not going to the gym, whoever were having gym membership before, um, including myself, I have to remind myself how to exercise uh, daily. So what I say is walking, obviously I know several of you are doing outside, walking, jogging, riding a bike, with maintaining good social distance um, and gardening and yard work is very, very um, uh, useful as well now. We can do a lot of things organic now. And um, while you're talking on the phone for work, say since the first eight hours in the morning, even longer, you can always walk while talking on the phone if that's possible. You can play with your kids in the backyard or adults themselves. Um, table tennis is good, badminton in the backyard with kids. Um, music and dance, if anybody likes to dance, that's a great exercise too. Um, online, a lot of exercises are posted on YouTube. You could do it that way. Fitness trackers, most everyone has a cell phone with a fitness tracker too. Um, and that will also help you count your steps, count what you do, <coughs> what you learn, even while doing your house chores. A lot of women do a lot, and of course men too, I'm sorry about that, but both of you do a lot of um, house chores, which will also be included as your calories burned. So that's a good way of um, getting exercise daily. Um, when to contact the doctor or see a physiatrist or any, anybody who specializes in spine. If this back pain and neck pain, after you rest it, after you take the medications over the counter, it's just not going away, then you want to seek a physician's uh, opinion. Um, after a fall, say you fell and you had an injury and then you're hurting, you definitely want to have it checked out. Weakness, numbness, tingling in your legs or arms or uh, other symptoms that you want to see. Loss of bladder and bowel control. A lot of them um, generally don't have this, but if there's spinal cord injury, then bladder and bowel control loss is seen. There's weakness in legs. Um, that needs immediate attention. And fever, unintentional weight loss. These are something related to cancer. Um, you can have that checked also. 
I think those are it, my slides for the morning. Um, Pranita, <clears throat> I have a question on slide 10. Sure. sure. Um, so, when you, can you go to slide 10? Oh, oh. oh. I have it here. So it's talking like up at the top, you have uh, uh, some labels like hydration and uh, dehydration. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is that relation there? So uh, when we say hydration and dehydration, so the disc is a uh, fluid filled space, like it has good uh, volume in the disc. So if the disc degenerates, which is like disc is kind of, um, that's called dehydration. Where a good fat pillow, I tell again the patients, a good fat pillow as you're losing, kind of thins out. So you're losing the um, volume, it's the same thing. This is all about the disc hydration and dehydration that they're talking. So um, it's just the amount of fluid at the time of different activities, right? That's what you're trying to show here? The, the different activities you do, the disc gets uh, pressurized differently. So you start degenerating the disc. Um, if you start doing the wrong techniques, uh, that's what it means by saying. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Does anyone have any questions on the slides? Let me look at the slides. So I can... Okay. Um, it's not about the slides. I had a question about the pain. So when we had the pain on something, like, do we need to give some rest? Even the, if we are giving the rest, still we are having the pain. Um, is it okay to continue with the pain and, and trying to strengthen that organ or um, the part or whatever it is, um, either leg or hand or anything? You can try stretching, strengthening exercises if you know of some uh, some good exercises. But again, you want to use proper um, techniques and exercises. So if that is taking care of your pain, then you can mm -hmm. continue to do that, your stretching exercises. But if that is kind of limiting your functions, it's pain is not going away uh, no matter what, you want to check, get it checked out. Is that a, a problem that could be fixed or is there something else going on? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, but as long as stretching exercises help you, that's fine. You can continue to do that. Um, for example, um, I do have the right hand pain that I was suffering for years. Sure. So I, I went to a neurologist and I checked with everybody. Everybody says everything is good. All you need to do is just give some rest to that hand. Okay. You had MRI, my, MRI also? You had mm -hmm. MRI also? Mm -hmm. And that looks fine? Yeah, everything looks fine. But if I work a lot in the kitchen, if I try to clean the home or something like that, if I'm doing like a little bit of work and trying to give rest, that should be fine. No pain at all. Uh, nothing uh, goes wrong. But if I try to do a little more than what I'm doing every day, that gives me pain. So is there any suggestions for that? How I need to handle yeah, so the two things that possibly could be, if it's not nerve related, then it could be a tight muscle, like we call it trigger point, where mm -hmm. the muscle spasms to the point that it'll mimic like a nerve. It might feel like the pain is going down the arm. The other thing with work that can get aggravated, I don't know if you've ever ch been checked for carpal tunnel syndrome, like carpal tunnel syndrome, which is like mm -hmm. uh, the hand goes numb uh, mm -hmm. and heavy and also hurts with activities. That's mm -hmm. a very simple um, condition, but it can also cause sim symptoms like your um, nerve pain or pain okay. down the neck. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I have a question in the same context. I mean, like uh, most of the time, like when we have this um, pain, like we um, try to use a warm compression or a, a cold compression, thinking that it will go away. So sometimes it helps uh, momentarily, but it comes back again. Like, uh, so is that something that we need to, um, is that the first remedy that we can try and then figure out, is it helping or like, is it, oh, what, what's your yes, So first thing you, as you were doing, say a pain comes after you did something uh, strenuous or there is some activity you did and you have the pain. First thing you want to do is ice it. 
like you were talking about, ice pack for about um, 48 hours, or you can alternate ice and heat after that. Um, you can take Advil or Aleve, Tylenol. Those are the things that can decrease the pain. But if it keeps coming constantly, no matter what you're doing, then uh, you can probably have your um, uh, physician check out some x-rays of your neck or even send you to some physical therapy to show you proper exercise stretching uh, techniques, which also helps a lot. And then you can do them at home. Okay. <coughs> and what also helps is, like I said, prevention. If it is aggravating with certain activities you do, you want to check if you're doing it correctly or is there something um, that was not done right. And if you're working at a workstation computer uh, eight hours or more a day, then you want to stretch out in between. You don't want to sit continuously because a lot of uh, professionals who are in front of the computer will, will get muscle spasms in their trapezius, which is right um, in the shoulder blades and shoulder area. Um, that's where stretching is important. So, but like <coughs> this pain continues for like um, uh, a week and then next week it happens. Like is that like something just because of the activity or is it something uh, underneath, uh, underlying uh, there, there could be a bigger problem? I mean like uh, so most of the times like uh, the pain will come and then go away and then you don't see until next week or like uh, when you do right. more work. Um, if it is repeatedly happening for the, with the same type of activity, then you probably want to get it checked. Make sure it's just um, myofascial or muscular, or is it something more than that? Okay. And if it keeps happening again and again. Okay. Anybody has any questions? I have a question. So um, I have a very bad habit of like breaking my knuckles, like, you know, just doing this. And mm -hmm. we have that habit. I know most of us have. And um, my kids do the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. Now I like, but they argue with me that it's not doing any harm to you by doing that. It's just popping the aid out of your, you know, joints. It's absolutely fine. So what do you say about it? That's, that's right, actually. It's just air pockets that that's what you hear when you do that. It's okay. You're not going to uh, hurt yourself doing that. Okay. But yeah. those, are, those are really the times that you do is stress. Stress is when you keep uh, doing that. So try doing other stress relieving things than rather, uh, you know, pressing on your knuckles. <laughs> but yeah, it is air pockets in between the joints. That's okay. what you hear. Yeah, my kids are very happy to hear that now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see them nodding their faces. <laughs> yeah, that's good. True. <laughs> So is there any specific age when the this neck and back pain started or like is it like general i mean like everybody can have anything yeah there is really no age um they i have very young patients come uh, these days there could be sports related injuries that come with uh, young and back pain like we were talking about the neck the tex neck syndrome those are something we see constantly with having you know a lot of stress in these um uh, muscles uh, it could be just muscular, nothing serious, but then yes, they even kids can uh, have problems. Some have scoliosis, born with scoliosis. Uh, some have pars defect, uh, which is like the bone connection is not connected. Um, they're born like that. So all those can have uh, back problems with much younger age. Um, Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, so I was going to ask, like, is this like uh, always physical stress or like emotional stress also can uh, cause yes. the shoulder and neck and back pains? Definitely emotional stress can definitely do that um, because like, you know, a lot of us hold our stress on these muscles again. Um, we un unknowingly, we are tense, tensing up ourselves when we are under stress. 
Um, um, I tell, again, breathing techniques are very um, useful for, um, sorry. My screen went uh, locked. Um, so breathing techniques are very um, useful for the emotional stress. I tell patients also go to a dark room, um, sit with no, uh, or you can just put some spa music or some uh, meditation music and breathe in and out. Just concentrate on your breathing. That helps a lot with emotional stress. As we all know, yoga and meditation, which has been there for years and ages, I totally believe in that. It, it does help. Um, you know, as um, uh, social, socially now we are not gathering, but you know, when we do have social gatherings, that's a big emotional uh, stress reliever. Pets, if you all have in the house, pets are big uh, stress busters too. Um, but definitely emotional stress has uh, factors on pain. Yeah. Pranita, I have a question about vitamin D. Is there yeah. a, like, not knowing if you are vitamin D deficient or not, is there a standard level, like uh, a specific amount that if it is safe for everyone to consume? Yeah, over the counter vitamin D3 as it's sold or vitamin D, it's over the counter, you can take one daily. But if it is prescription or if it's really low, then they'll give you once a week dose like 50,000 international units, something like that, very high dose. But if, as we all know, we're indoors, we hardly get any sun. Um, so more than likely we are all vitamin D deficient. So you can take um, that over the counter vitamin D. What should be the concentration though? Uh, it comes as, I think it comes, I'm not definite, but I can look it up and let you know again. I think it comes as 500, maybe. I'm not sure, I'll, I'll let you know. But it's just over the counter. It's just one strength. Yeah. Well, they do have two thousand IU, and uh, it, I think it can start from five hundred. Five hundred. Yeah. yeah. I've seen two thousand IU also. If you're taking one every day, you don't need the strong dose one. Just one a day is good, unless you were um, uh, tested and you're really low, and your physician says you want to take a higher dose every day, then you can take it. Okay. Yeah, I'm doing the one a day and it is working um, better for me. It Smita. makes a whole uh, difference of vitamin D. Uh, my, my vitamin D was six when I got it tested. And okay. before that, it was like, no matter how long I slept, I used to feel very uh, fatigued in the morning, didn't have energy. I used to get muscle cramps. So I was like, what is this? And then uh, vitamin D was the answer. Yeah, very I've good. been prescribed several times and um, uh, I can totally see that I've been on 50,000 IU once a week and uh, vitamin D deficiency right. you can immediately see the difference like like you said yes, same you definitely, yeah you definitely see immediate difference total um, act, you feel more energetic and uh, definite difference yes yeah mm -hmm. so vitamin D and calcium should, uh -huh. should it always should you always also take a calcium uh, supplement or you're good just with vitamin D. For us, our younger age, I think calcium supplement, even if it's not there, is okay. But a lot of them don't eat um, any calcium supplement on a daily diet. Like we eat yogurt every day, so that has calcium. But a lot of them here don't eat any yogurt. Don't So for them, calcium is additionally needed. So cheese and yogurt is most of the time the calcium supplements um, in, in your diet. But um, if not, if you think you're not taking enough of that, then you might need. And people who have menopause, they might need, but um, otherwise we should be fine. Um, um, Pranita, okay. I have one more question uh, uh, sure. regarding the uh, whole uh, thing. I know the vitamin uh, D you will have to take with the K, K2, right? Okay. Get your absorption up. For absorption? Yeah. Um, no, not necessarily. That's what I read somewhere. You know, if you are taking vitamin D, you will have to have it, uh, you know, like how they say, if you are taking turmeric, turmeric has to, to activate turmeric, you will have to have, uh, you know, black pepper added to it. Really? This yeah. is, uh, I'm not aware of that, but I, I will probably look into that myself because I'm not aware of that. 
I thought turmeric by itself and also uh, vitamin D by itself, it's going to um, work. No, the what they say with the vitamin D, what I've read is like, you know, if you take only by uh, vitamin D by itself, the absorption uh -huh. in your body, you know, it won't take the whole uh, thing in your body. Okay. Uh -huh. So you have to add, uh, you know, K2 with it. Oh, okay. And I'm, I'm not sure about that. Maybe I can look it up and um, see if that's something, uh, not to my knowledge at least, I'm not aware of that. And turmeric and black pepper also is something I don't know. Okay. Um, another thing I have is like, you know, for people who are vegan, uh, who don't uh, take yogurt or anything for calcium, uh, what would you uh -huh. suggest? For vegans, uh, calcium supplement, I'm not sure also, probably Suhas Naka would have told it better probably, but um, I guess calcium supplements is probably what you should take maybe then. I'm not sure in vegan category what has calcium. Gotcha. <laughs> Yeah. Venu, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Telling, I've been yelling you yelling a few times and I'm not hearing it. What's going wrong here? All can right. Hear you. you can hear me? Yeah. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> 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 because I'll be like, hello, hello, Venu, hello, Venu. Yeah, it passed. Okay. So uh, um, that uh, use, I mean, what Anita had mentioned with uh, use of pepper with uh, with turmeric, uh, increases the absorption. It is needed for the absorption of uh, uh, the turmeric into your body. So uh -huh. ever since I heard that, like I've been adding pepper to all my dishes. Wherever turmeric goes, pinch of pepper goes in all my dishes. Oh, is it? Is it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. That's what they have like scientifically. Hey, if we uh, if also you see in our uh, ancient, uh, you know, that's oh, why that in our ancient uh, products, like in, uh, if you see sambar puri, oh, so oh, it oh, naturally oh, comes with pepper and chilies oh, and uh, oh, turmeric, everything together. So oh, is it? pretty much any of the cooking that you see in an Indian style of cooking, they always add, you know, turmeric and uh, pepper you know, in their dishes together, like the, all the masalas and curries, you know, would have a little bit of black pepper in it. Okay, makes sense. I had a question, Pranita. Yes, yes, Satya. Uh, if anybody had disc tears, mm -hmm. is it possible to completely recover from the tear, for the disc tears? Discitis, you saying discitis? It's kind of a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he put it in the speaker, so it is resounding. It's like my words are coming after. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, when you talk about the spine and discs, mm -hmm. if anybody had disc tears, like a tear in the disc. Oh, tear, tear in the disc. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. My English That's is okay. not That's good. okay. I, yeah. yeah. So, is it possible to recover from the tear completely back to normal? No. So, you, your pain will get better. But the tear, say, say you don't have pain today. For instance, you have a tear in the disc and you had pain in the beginning. And then you recovered from it. Now mm -hmm. you go take another MRI. The tear mm -hmm. will still be there. So, disc is something that once it degenerates, it's not going to come back to its normal self. It doesn't have that kind of blood supply for it to come back uh, to a normal disc. So the even, tear, even if the pain is completely gone. Yes, even if the pain is completely gone. So that's called discogenic pain, where with the disc problems or disc degeneration, disc tear, there will be pain, but the inflammation as it goes down, as your body recovers it, your inflammation goes down, um, your pain should get better. And then the disc tear possibly will be there, which is okay. You don't have to worry about that as long as you don't have pain. Oh, okay. But yes, it can be there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, yes. I have a habit of sleep, sleeping on the sideways. Okay. I'm not used to sleeping on my you know, stomach or on the back. So what uh -huh. does happen, I'm used to having a, 
a pillow which is like uh, slightly larger in size uh -huh. and slightly stiffer just to kind of support my head is that something that is not advisable because a lot of people keep telling me that kind of uh, putting such big pillow is not mm -hmm. really good for your neck yeah yes that's true that is true they say but then ergonomically if you're supporting your back your neck properly you should be fine you're not getting neck pain are you no then you should be fine okay thank you yeah it's quiet <laughs> hello Hello. Sashi. Hello. Sashi. How are you? Hey, Sashi. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you and see you too. Good, you are in good, office, good. Sashi. Okay, now we don't ask too many questions now. I'm going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I'm going to ask you something, uh, which I guess all the all of my friends who are watching this will also help, because this is where they need to come back to work. They can't keep <laughs> hiding. They can't keep hiding on Corona there for a long time. Okay. Now, uh, my my question is, you know, we all sit and work. So mm -hmm. I I'm sitting now. I'm sitting in my. I'm in that work. So I want to show show and see the chairs what we sit on, and the difference. Mm -hmm. I just want you to tell me the difference. For me, it's not hurt, hurting anything. Or I'm not feeling any difference. I'm so far, so good. But uh, mm -hmm. as I said, uh, people say, you know, when you cross your middle age, something can hurt you. So the one chair. <laughs> So the one chair where I'm sitting right now, let me show you. You can see this chair now. This yes, chair, yes, uh -huh. this chair goes uh -huh. back and forth. Okay. Yeah. This is all back and forth. So what I do is, when we sit here, I think this is all, all my friends here can do this. I'm, when I sit here, what I do is, I sit like, my base, like where my the bone, the end is is mm -hmm. like almost right angle to the back mm -hmm. of the chair. So I mm -hmm. keep doing this. Okay. This I think. Okay. I don't know what that. But it makes me feel good. But I know at this time I'm working only that joint back and forth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I sit three hours, four hours continues here. You know, sometimes. So we do mm -hmm. this, and it doesn't hurt me. But that's one chair I sit. The other chair, what I have here, is this hard chair. This yeah. is a hard chair. It doesn't. It doesn't rock. So mm -hmm. in, if when I sit here, I can do this. So I have to pull my whole chair back. So when I do pull my whole chair back, this this bag, this is like at least uh, five or ten inches below my neck. All right. Right. So I, right. I, I arch from that that point of my vertebra right there, maybe in the middle. I'm going to arch it back, but my from my base until the middle of my vertebra is just straight. Okay. So sometimes right. I feel like when I keep doing this, I may break it off. But I, I, <laughs> I just go back. Sometimes I do this. So that's one chair what we sit, and the other chair. Another chair, what I can show you is is little more bigger he's, chair. He's prepared. He's a bigger <laughs> chair. I'm in the office, so I can show it, right? So this office, this bigger chair, mm -hmm. this goes back and forth, up and down, all sides. I can go. Mm -hmm. Other than the chairs with Uma and Sharad sits, which I don't know, the managers have better chair, I guess. <laughs> so I don't know about those chairs. These are the chairs what we sit at work. So my question to you is, should I should I is it better for me? Because I, I think we can all, we tell the people at work they can give us the chairs what we want. Mm -hmm. In the long run, is it is it good for me to keep arching this on this lean back chair? Mm -hmm. I see some people put some pillows here in the in between. I don't know what mm -hmm. what sort of arch, what sort of curve they are expecting. I don't know what's going to help them. But I see mm -hmm. some people put there, and some people arch this, and some has a straight one. So mm -hmm. although these three chairs, what I showed you, what do you think? I mean, what are pros think and cons of this? Is? I think the chair that you're sitting on is is uh, does look good with proper back support and yeah. the arch. Yeah. Um, so I think this chair, of uh, all the three chairs, I would prefer this chair um, yeah. that you're sitting right now. It has proper okay. uh, arch and back support. Uh, those are something I would. And then the other uh, chairs don't have, you know, good. No, they don't have. Support. Yeah. This other other one is hard one. It doesn't arch. Uh, yeah, no, I, I I like this chair over all your other chairs. Okay. This one has okay. better support and arch. Okay. Yeah. And all right, thank you. Because like, since I have the office, I can show this. That's why. I said. <laughs> sure, sure. But and then I heard. Yeah. 
Is it a good idea to rock like that? No, probably yeah. not because eventually the springs will go and then you will have a bad uh, back if you fall backwards. I know. But it, it don't fall back. It can keep doing this, but I, I keep doing this because if I don't get for normally I don't sit more than 20 minutes. You know, I get up, but <laughs> I sit at work for three hours, four hours we sit here, so I get up and uh, just to make sure, you know, when these people talk about the chakras, it's all the spots between the base of your vertebra and the top of your neck. <laughs> Although they divide by eight and they say it's eight chakras or 20 chakras or 30 chakras. Well, I don't know what that means. But uh, uh, when I arch back with the back here, what was concerning me is I know my base where the vertebra ends is moving, but mm -hmm. then I'm trying to arch it from the middle of this place. So like if mm -hmm. I, I don't know, if there are like 20 pieces between my base and my neck, the 15 mm -hmm. pieces not moving, or the other five pieces moving from the back. So sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, it, I may break it off after 60 or 70 years old, you know, that piece. No, that the, the, the most it happens in your lower five bones and then the yeah. upper in the neck bone. That's it. Okay. The most movement okay. happens in the lower and the neck. Okay. So these are our employees chair. Our, um, I mean, like, like non-management chairs at work, mm -hmm. and they really, okay. these are the things what we all use. And uh, I think uh, to get those chairs, what we have in a conference room, and the manager do have a bigger chair. I think the difference is they have this place is more bigger, bigger, higher, or bigger, yes. longer. So when they ask yeah. the thing, the whole it's like a whole forty-five degree move like this. <laughs> so my my move is like this now. It goes like this. And uh, I think the other chairs may go more. I think we can get them to, if we go tell them, I guess they'll give us. So I was just checking because later when we come back to work, I think they're going to ask all those things. They're going to move all these spaces around here and there's a lot of rearrangements. So I think uh -huh. we may have some options to go ask them for the good chairs. Sheshi, Sh Sh if you have uh, any back problems or anything, if you go to your management, yes, they, they will give yeah. that one. Yeah, um, yeah that's what they're asking. Like. Hmm. Character, the problem is we don't want to wait until we have a back problem to get a good <laughs> chair, right? Oh, I, 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 I understand. Uh, it, it's mainly usually companies they go based upon the volume and uh, what it costs for the company. But uh, uh, you have actually like you can work with your manager and uh, because the longer back chairs, whatever Shashi is talking about, yes, definitely that's going to help. And uh, in the management side, uh, Shashi, when you say that management, it's mostly usually they do that because by the time whoever reaching the management, they are usually older. So that's why um, actually I think they do that. That's not official, but uh, some, you, you can get... Uh, sometimes we try to take, pull the chair from our conference room. They say, pull it back. <laughs> pull, the, pull the chair back to the conference <laughs> Yeah, But anyway, I want, just want to make sure, you know, when I arch, I'm not going to break anything because the way I'm arching, keep being like, the yeah. I don't know. yeah, the eventually, eventually the springs will break off, Shashi. If you keep doing of what? Of the <laughs> of chair the of my chair. body. Of the chair of my body. Of the chair. <laughs> okay, chair is good. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but on the same context, like, is it better to have it soft cushioned or like it should be like um, little sturdy and then strong, so it gives little comfort and not get too cozy and then like it. It's yeah, your your uh, seat, the cushion that you're sitting in should be soft, but the back should not be soft. It should be nice um, with good back support arch, and then also um, good height and everything to support your back. Yeah, but and the I cushion. See, is I, sorry, and I see a lot of people around the workplace. Uh, I don't know whether it's it's uh, it's some sort of. Uh, 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 their body requirement or is this a thing i see people sitting on ball big ball they sit on the ball without the back yeah. and that's, yeah, some, people that's stand, some people stand and work now they mm -hmm. have they have these terminals and i feel like they're working some nasa center or something everyone feels <laughs> like they're working in cnn with all the big stuff they stand they stand on a pedestal and they stand and work so they don't sit they don't sit at all the place they, there's no chairs around there so yeah. Uh, you you missed a one slide Pranita Garu showed. Uh, yeah. Basically, how to sit at the computer. That's a, some people yeah. who has the back issues. That's what it oh, is yeah. actually. 
you can move up and down the your uh, uh, terminal basically the it automatically move you can stand and walk and sometimes when you want to sit then again it automatically when you press the button it will come down oh really so oh, that, that question sit down i thought that you can only stand on that one no no no, no. It, it can do both and actually pranitha got showed one slide that's what exactly to solve the problems uh, uh, that's what they will suggest if somebody has a problem Oh, okay, okay. And also, the ball. Okay. Some people sitting is going to help their core strengthen, like their back muscles and their abdominal muscles. So yeah. people use the ball to uh, do the core strengthening to sit, yeah, but you hope, have to really balance on it. Yeah, I hope they don't forget. There's not no nothing in the back, and then that's what I'm saying. Hope, yeah, <laughs> hope they balance themselves, but that's what they use for. Yeah. Mm. All right. Not for people like you, Shashi. <laughs> yeah, who's rocking? You'll definitely fall. <laughs> I rock. <laughs> Looks like Shashi is doing some research in the office while everybody is not there. Which See, chair is no, best for them? Yeah. Which no, chair no, is better can... for them? But Shashi yeah. forgot that Sharath also is here. So when people are going and asking for the chair, Sharath know what exactly to tell them? <laughs> How to sit? He is going to give the same slide show for everybody. <laughs> no, no. Right? The problem Shashi is. The problem Shashi facing now is uh, previously he used to be the most of the time in the cafeteria. Now we remove the chairs in the cafeteria. <laughs> He's having tough time. <laughs> <laughs> this, this chair is nice, sir. This chair is really nice. I like this. I like this so, small chair. Uh, <laughs> like going back to your ergonomic, uh, the uh, slide that you have for the actual posture, we yeah. have it like. It's been shared to all of us at work as well, and we yeah. all know about it. But again, it comes back to uh, being conscious about it. Like we all know, we have to sit straight and have your neck. Right. You know, even the monitor has to be a certain your at your eye level right. and all of that. But yes, I mean, in ten minutes, like I try to be conscious and sit down like that in no time i'm arching i have my feet up on my chair i'm <laughs> i'm completely in a different posture and then i have to remind myself to go back to that posture that's true so being um, like i mean we we just have to be mindful of it and uh, even when we are at home and having food or whatever like the moment i sit back straight everyone like around the table we all tend become conscious and we you know sit straight again and you know why we are arching back yeah 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 it's yeah. definitely something we all need to be mindful of you're right mm -hmm. good one so i know my chair now thank you pranati you you're, you're welcome the party. thank you you're welcome hi indi Uh, this is Bharti. I have a question on D-vitamin and uh, calcium capsules. Sure. Uh, already, everybody asked. I just uh, have another question extending that discussion. Uh, how many days or months do we need to continue? Like mostly, um, calcium comes with D3, right? So, yes. as you said, we always consume covered also daily basis. Unknowingly, maybe we will be taking more calcium. Uh, is it having any side effects? actually how many days or months we need to take or do we need to continuously go for checkups and uh, uh, stop accordingly don't know <laughs> yeah that's uh, that's right i know that's a genuine question that many would have so truly with our diet i feel like a lot of i mean because we don't i don't think so all of us kind of counter um, uh, you know everything that we have to eat daily especially vitamin d is something you will get uh, uh, going outdoors like really from the sun uh, we all of us kind of are more indoor uh, with work unless we're getting out for yard work or any garden type of work or running jogging which is not every time that we're going in the sun so uh, definitely vitamin d is something we have been recommending for everyone to take it daily i don't think so the over the counter vitamin d dose will give you overdose by taking one a day every day uh, same thing with calcium uh, we may not get enough calcium every day so um, taking calcium daily you know every day is also fine i don't think so you're going to overdose it so we can continue uh, however we want to there is no limit as such like we need to take for one year or two years or any yeah, no, no limit as such no limit as such and then i also recommend like you know at least 
uh, I, whatever age we are at, you want to have once a year um, check up with the primary care physician. You have all your blood work done. You have your physical done. Everybody should go at least once a year to their general, even if you feel healthy. You want to go to your general physician, have everything checked out once a year. If you're not healthy, then you want to go more uh, often, which your PCP or your primary care physician would recommend. But otherwise, go once a year, please. Yeah, everyone. So it's okay to consume. Uh, so always we have the questions, are we taking or excessive we are taking? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I don't think so. We, we will overdose ourselves taking one every day. It's just like your multivitamin. You want to take one every day also. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you that, but I don't take it myself. But it's something I would recommend because we don't get enough in our food. Um, uh, at least we don't count ourselves getting all of that properly. Okay. Thank you, Andy. I, I, I won't add. I won't add a little bit on this. A little bit. Mm -hmm. My, you know, what I'm saying is, expose yourself to sunlight, early morning sunlight. Mm -hmm. That will surely help. I know. Sure. Between between 6:30 to 8. Don't miss that sunlight. That's like Surya uh, Namaskaram is the best thing to do yeah. in the morning. Get out and go bed. Even, even, even if you can't bend down and do the namaskaram, yeah. just stand in front of the sun. Just stand, yes. expose yourself. Expose yourself. I mean, like I'm not telling standing naked or fully exposed. At least <laughs> make sure like you have less clothing, you know. Don't want you to cover up everything, but just a little bit. I'm like your shirt and that skirt and the pants, shorts and um, sleeveless and stand in the sun, but don't go beyond 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Anything, you know, so that 6.30 to 7, 7.30 is the right. Even even if there's clouds, don't think there's a, there are no rays. It will help. That's right. Clouds, yeah. Don't people say, oh, it's cloudy, there's no sun there. No, no, just stand there. Six, you stand between the 6.30, 7.30, you're getting something for sure. Maybe your tablet numbers will go less later, for sure. <laughs> oh, how about in the evening time? Evening time uh, is good. Morning, know, time is morning time is where you get that thing. Yeah, you get your vitamin D processed in the morning. Yeah, that guy is about to set. He's going back to the dust. He's going he goes again. He's he's giving it all. So take it out what he gives in the morning. That's when the sunflower blooms, all the flowers bloom morning with, with the when the sun sun rays hit the tip of those petals, they bloom, not in the evening. So there's something in those rays which you get between six thirty to seven thirty. Try that, you know, you know, it works. Even if you don't, you're not going to lose anything. There's no, no side effects for those drugs. Some rays. Right. And sometimes yeah. we go in the afternoon also if it's cloudy or if it's not so sunny. So it's not good, you're yeah, saying. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm saying it's good. So even it's good. If it's evening, good. Morning, it's morning good. if there's a cloud or sunlight, forget it. it. Sun is there. Sun is there and rays are coming in for sure. You just stand there facing the sun. With a cup of coffee, if you want to pass, I just stand there. If you want to do a Surya Namaskar, well and good, then that's a bonus. Mm -hmm. If you want to sit there for a meditation, that's a double bonus. <laughs> but stand, standing there is a primary thing. No shadows on you, direct sunlight. And if you've already done a shower on your bowel and your brush your teeth and you've done all those things, go stand there. Don't do, don't do that before that. You cannot. You shouldn't just wake up and just go stand there. Make sure you're in. Just you're you're you done your number one, number two, all the things out. You know your your body is light. Then you stand in front of the guard. Namaskar, ready for namaskar. I'm telling you, it'll help. I know it's helping me for sure. I don't miss yeah, that. The natural way is the best way to do, but you know all of us are in the rush getting out know, to yeah. work in the morning, so I don't think so. All of us are doing that. No, but even work in the morning when you're driving, you know, let the windows open, you know. Don't put, don't sit on the AC. Sun, sun rays will get you anyway. You just need to be outside. Right. If you put the windows up and tint your, tint your window and you can do that, you know, and something, it'll help you. I'm not telling you not do that. You can do what you want to do. But sun rays is good. Morning sun rays. That's what I'm right. Pranita? Yes. Uh, another question about shoulder dislocation. Mm -hmm. So, um, is it true that once you have uh, dislocated your shoulders, you're more prone to that? That's true. Okay. Any specific reason why one is uh, more prone to that than like others? Not everyone has shoulder dislocations, right? 
that's right see the shoulder is something obviously we're using and mainly shoulder dislocation happens when you're doing overhead activities like when you are raising your hand trying to push it backwards that's when the shoulder dislocates um the other things you can do is like strengthen the rotator cuff muscles which is um what holds your shoulder um that will help you with regular activities but if you're in sports and doing overhead activities uh, the shoulder can dislocate but just over around the house activities uh, if you strengthen your shoulder it will help not um, dislocate again but yes the socket itself is loose uh, for people who have shoulder dislocation or some may have rotator cuff tears uh, but if you can strengthen the rotator cuff which holds your shoulder well um it helps somewhat okay yeah okay ranita garu thank you sir chapan yeah uh i know everybody is watching on the youtube and getting the videos from for anything but still um, do you have any suggested uh, videos or uh, anything for the exercises especially for the back back strengthening if you have any please um, suggest i i have uh, pictures like a um, it's a picture presentation it's not a video but i have picture presentation i can forward that okay thank you yeah you welcome yeah i have mm -hmm. everybody it's quiet again <laughs> so people are thinking like it's a lot of information to keep yeah yeah just um uh, definitely should be should be mindful exercise is very important for everyone um to kind of keep ourselves young forever <laughs> um and yeah lifting doing things while we are doing things just should be mindful we don't realize when we are young how our backs are so resilient that we do different things um but our back is degenerating every time we are doing different activities but um and and family genetics play a big role if it if it runs in your family you having arthritis or joint problems that's inevitable it'll come no matter how much we are uh, protecting ourselves but uh, definitely there is help if there if anything happens uh, <laughs> yeah that's the other thing definitely seek attention you don't want to say it will go away or um, you know you want to you want to intervene early than later you don't want to sit with it to sit with you forever so you want to stop it in the beginning yeah. this is really useful information pranita Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, especially during the COVID nineteen, everybody is sitting at home and uh, just yeah. sitting. Um, yeah. You know, some some of them is working on their beds, maybe. <laughs> so <laughs> it it should be like it is very useful for everyone to remind ourselves how to sit and how to take care of our neck, our back. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, Pranita. Yeah. So no, that's no, thank you. Thank you to you all. so like in my house we are four of us and as soon as uh, the lockdown started all four of us are at our computers but we are mm -hmm. not equipped for that we only have one office chair and sure, sure. we do have comfortable chairs but we are like always struggling i am still at least my like venu and the kids have uh, the proper room i am like moving around the house the entire time i'm like uh, i'm trying to figure out what is the best place for me still sure, yeah <laughs> and we got like more office chairs but after all of this is over what do you do with all those chairs <laughs> like you find you play all of those things and tables and all of that so um i mean yeah it's been really yeah, definitely if you don't have a proper work desk as such then you know you want to do is like even if you're sitting somewhere or doing things you want to move around and stretch yourself so that you're not straining yourself sitting in that position yeah and that's and one thing to really ever since we started like working from home i feel i'm at least at work i used to get up and move around but here now i feel like i'm just <laughs> even 
<laughs> this work in the house and work for work. It's like 24-7 work type of uh, thing now. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Take a quick lunch break and then go back to uh, my table or wherever I'm sitting and, you know. <laughs> I'm working more, I think, from home. Oh, yeah, from you're working more. So, uh, one thing I wanted to ask was, is it better to go for a better cushion? Like, uh, you know, how we have uh, some of the cushions, the um, ergonomic cushions, or go for an entire chair, like, I, I was uh, looking at the options. I wasn't sure what would be better. While sitting for work? Yeah, for work, yeah. yeah. So, uh, for work, I would go with the chair, proper chair, where you can adjust it accordingly. You can adjust the height. You can, if you if you got that cushion, then you may not be able to adjust the chair. Um, so, I would go with the chair, proper um, ergonomic chair. Yeah, so, so that you can adjust the height, adjust the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks to you also, Veenu Garu. We are really enjoying these sessions. I was not able to speak from yesterday. I just woke up for this session. It's definitely efforts put into Veenu Garu for, to get all this taken care of from different people. So, yeah, it's, it's really good for the community. Yeah, it's good that you guys are like taking time to talk with everybody because you guys are busy yeah. as everybody, right? Yeah, it's just uh, once so. And um, I think if nobody has questions, then probably next week um, the um, Anita was saying like uh, her sister can do the yoga. Like we okay. had a session last week. Um, the uh, me and Smita and a couple other friends uh, did the session. I mean, like, it was just, like, very informal. And so next week, if uh, well, I'm thinking we should have something like a yoga, but that will be in the morning. I mean, like, because we cannot do yoga at uh, 10 o'clock or, like, 11 mm -hmm. o'clock, right? Or in the night. It might be better if we do that session in the morning. I'll send more details. I need to talk with Anita and then see what time. It might be good for next week. So probably we'll plan something uh, like that for next week. Uh, yeah, we know. I think I will have to talk to my sister too. I think uh, Saturday might work uh, better for her, but I have to talk to her and I will. Uh, we will um, catch up too. Yeah. So her sister is a yoga instructor and uh, she's based in, uh, where is she? Singapore. There is Singapore. Singapore, yeah. So there is a time difference too. So we need to coordinate that uh, as well. Yeah, but it would be good to do something like that. So, but it will. But I am just telling you guys so uh, to make that it will be in the morning. It's not gonna be um, really flexible to do whenever. It is better to do with an empty stomach. Uh, that's why when we did it uh, last time, I had her come over around eight a.m. in the morning for us. <laughs> Usually Saturday, Sunday, ten o'clock it is for me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah but I'll, I'll keep you guys posted once i have more information but um yeah thank you yeah. thank you very much oh, Anita, for taking all, time uh, and uh, giving us all this thank you all and all the services you're doing for the community i know you're still working and going and like you know physically going and working every day sure. thank you yeah. very much oh no problem thank you again thank you Thanks. thank you pranita Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste, Uncle. I didn't see you in the beginning. That's why I didn't say anything. Smita, your dad is there, right? No, he left. Oh, he left? He's yeah. not there anymore. He was there earlier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. He's very excited to join all these sessions, actually. <laughs> Time for me. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Andy. Have a good and safe uh, day. And then you uh, keep yourself. Thank you again. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.